Please join me in the call to worship and the lighting of our Advent candle. We hear the call to joy in the prophet Zephaniah. The Lord has removed your judgment. He has turned away your enemies. The Lord rejoices over us with gladness. He will renew us with his love. We light this candle to show the joy that comes to us from the Lord. Please be seated. If you would please turn in your bulletins and join me in the litany for Advent. O wisdom coming forth from the mouth of the Most High, pervading and permeating all creation, you order all things with strength and gentleness. Come now and teach us the way to salvation. O Adonai, ruler of the house of Israel, you appeared in the burning bush to Moses and gave him the law on Sinai. Come with outstretched arm to save us. O root of Jesse, rising as a sign for all the peoples, before you earthly rulers will will keep silent and nations give you honor. Come quickly to deliver us. O key of David, scepter over the house of Israel, you open and no one can close. You close and no one can open. Come to set free the prisoners who live in darkness and the shadow of death. O ruler of the nations, monarch for whom the people long, you are the cornerstone uniting all humanity. Come save us all whom you formed out of clay. O Emmanuel, our sovereign and lawgiver, desire of the nations and savior of all, come and save us, O Lord our God. God of grace, ever faithful to your promises, The earth rejoices in hope of our Savior's coming and looks forward with longing to his return at the end of time. Prepare our hearts to receive him when he comes, for he is Lord forever and ever. Please join me in the prayer of confession. It is printed in your bulletins. Let us pray. Eternal God, your Son was born to lighten all our darkness, yet we confess we doubt what we cannot prove and we ignore what we cannot see. We lack hope and we disbelieve your good news. Our cynical views are the fruit of our experience, not the key to the future. Our perfect analysis can describe the mountain but it is helpless to move it. As Christmas inches closer, give us faith so we may hope again and trust your good news of the coming Savior. Amen. And now let us stand and sing together our assurance of pardon.
You may be seated. Let us pray. O holy God, may the words of our mouths, the meditations of all of our hearts, and the songs of our lips be acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The first lesson. Then the man and his wife heard the sound of the Lord God as he was walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And they hid from the Lord God among the trees of the garden. But the Lord God called to the man, Where are you? He answered, I heard you in the garden. I was afraid because I was naked, so I hid. And he said, Who told you that you were naked? Have you eaten from the tree that I commanded you not to eat from? The man said, The woman you put here with me, she gave me some fruit from the tree and I ate it. Then the Lord God said to the woman, What is this you have done? The woman said, The serpent deceived me and I ate. So the Lord God said to the serpent, Because you have done this, Cursed are you above all livestock and all wild animals. You will crawl on your belly and you will eat dust all the days of your life. And I will put enmity between you and the woman and between your offspring and hers. He will crush your head and you will strike his heel. To Adam, he said, because you listened to your wife and ate fruit from the tree about which I commanded you, you must not eat from it. Cursed is the ground because of you. 
Through painful toil you will eat food from it all the days of your life. It will produce thorns and thistles for you, and you will eat the plants of the field. By the sweat of your brow you will eat your food until you return to the ground, since from it you were taken. For dust you are, and to dust you will return. The second lesson. The angel of the Lord called to Abraham from heaven a second time and said, I swear by myself, declares the Lord, that because you have done this and have not withheld your son, your only son, I will surely bless you and make your descendants as numerous as the stars in the sky and as the sand on the seashores. 
Your descendants will take possession of the cities of their enemies, and through your offspring all nations on earth will be blessed because you have obeyed me. The people walking in darkness have seen a great light. On those living in the land of deep darkness, a light has dawned. For to us a child is born, to us a son is given, and the government will be on his shoulders. And he will be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Of the greatness of his government and peace there will be no end. He will reign on David's throne and over his kingdom, establishing and upholding it with justice and righteousness from that time on and forever. The zeal of the Lord Almighty will accomplish this.
The fourth lesson. A shoot will come up from the stump of Jesse. From his roots, a branch will bear fruit. The spirit of the Lord will rest on him, the spirit of wisdom and of understanding, the spirit of counsel and of might, the spirit of the knowledge and fear of the Lord. And he will delight in the fear of the Lord. He will not judge but what he sees with his eyes or decide by what he hears with his ears. But with righteousness he will judge the needy. With justice he will give decisions for the poor of the earth. The wolf will live with the lamb. The leopard will lie down with the goat and the calf and the lion and the yearling together. And the little child will lead them. The cow will feed with the bear. Their young will lie down together. And the lion will eat straw like the ox. The infant will play near the cobra's den. The young child will put its hands into the viper's nest. They will neither harm nor destroy on all my holy mountain, for the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. The fifth lesson. In the sixth month of Elizabeth's pregnancy, God sent the angel Gabriel to Nazareth, a town in Galilee, 
to a virgin pledged to be married to a man named Joseph, a descendant of David. The virgin's name was Mary. The angel went to her and said, Greetings, you are highly favored. The Lord is with you. Mary was greatly troubled at his words and wondered what kind of greeting this might be. But the angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary. You have found favor with God. You will conceive and give birth to a son, and you are to call him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. The Lord God will give him the throne of his father David, and he will reign over Jacob's descendants forever. His kingdom will never end. How will this be, Mary asked the angel, since I am a virgin? The Holy Spirit will come on you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. So the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. I am the Lord's servant, Mary. May your word to me be fulfilled.
The Sixth Lesson In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Quirinius was governor of Syria, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger because there was no guest room available for them. The seventh lesson. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them. 
They were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today, in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. As we come to our time of offering, we can use this time as to offer back to God God's tithes and our own gifts, but we also can use this time to pray to him and to return our very lives to him. Please be seated.
and let us pray. Lord, for these offerings, we give you thanks. Today, especially, we thank you for those offerings that fall into a plate, and we even more thank you for the offerings of music, of time and talent. We thank you this day for the singers and the ringers, the musicians in our congregation. We thank you for the way they lead us to worship you deeper and better. In our prayers this day, we offer you thanksgiving for the many blessings you've put into our lives. We thank you for this season of year with family and friends. And we thank you most especially that during this season, you make us family. Through the birth of your son, Jesus, into this world, we all become brothers and sisters with him, children of you. We rejoice in that family, in being your child. As one of your precious ones, we offer you prayers this day for those who most need your care. We pray for members of this congregation who recover from surgery, for those who grieve this season, having lost loved ones. We pray for those who feel alone or who worry that their bodies or minds are failing them. And we pray for our neighbors, both near and far, who need your gracious touch this day. We pray especially during this month for the country of Malawi and especially all those who work there in your name as they try to feed their people through their drought, as they sing your praise in churches all over that land today. We pray for the SAC lunch program that here in our own town feeds those in greatest need. When we consider the ministries done in your name, Lord, those near and far, we ask that you would give us courage and the conviction to join in the ministry you give us. Make our hands your hands, and make our feet your feet, and give us the heart of your Son, Jesus. We pray all these things in your holy name, and together we offer the prayer your Son has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, And forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Listen now for the eighth lesson. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was with God in the beginning. Through him all things were made. Without him nothing was made that has been made. In him was life, and that life was the light of all mankind. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. 
He came as a witness to testify concerning that light, so that through him all might believe. He himself was not the light. He came only as a witness to the light. The true light that gives light to everyone was coming into the world. He was in the world, and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. He came to that which was his own, but his own did not receive him. Yet to all who did receive him, to those who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God. Children born not of natural descent, nor of human decision, or a husband's will, but born of of God. The Word became flesh and made his dwelling among us. We have seen his glory, the glory of the one and only Son who came from the Father, full of grace and truth. I would remind you that our time together continues right next door in the Family Center for our Christmas reception. As you go there, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all now and forevermore. Amen.